this is what we've got in store for you today on the All Things Book Show. But I, I thought, well, I'll be a bit cheeky and I'll apply for a Society of Authors grant to go to Antigua and do some research into 19th century naval history in the Caribbean. Mm. And much to my amazement, I was given the grant and I spent a lovely two weeks in Antigua. Welcome to the All Things Books show, hosted by award-winning, best-selling mystery author Don Brooks. Publishing has changed beyond recognition in recent years. Join Dawn as she interviews authors, narrators, and many more from across the creative community. This inspiring and informative show is for readers and writers. Hello and welcome to the All Things Book Show. This is episode two. And today I'm really excited to say that I've got a wonderful Scottish author with me, Wendy H. Jones. I'll bring her in and then I'll tell you a little bit about her before I start grilling her with questions. So hello, hello. Wendy. Nice to, hello. nice to have you with us. Right, I'm going to read a little bit about you. It's quite, it's quite lengthy, so I'm going to take a deep breath. Ah. So, Wendy H. Jones grew up in the beautiful Scottish city of Dundee. In a home full of books and with family who read extensively, she developed a passion for reading in early life. Having read all the books in the local library by the age of 10, why wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, she entered into a spirited discussion with a librarian as to why she should be provided with an adult library card. Showing steely will and determination, which she still shows today, I can guarantee, she won her battle and moved on to reading adult crime novels. True to her adventurous side, she joined the Royal Navy to undertake nurse training after leaving school. After six years in the Navy, she joined the Army. Why not? Well, she served for a further 17 years. I don't think she's got the RAF here. Anyway, this took her all over the world and fueled her love for travel and visiting exotic lands, which we're going to talk a bit about today. Postings to Hong Kong and Israel allowed her to travel extensively in the far and Middle East. Wendy's a committed Christian and a member of a city church in Dundee, part of the Frontiers organisation of churches. She enjoys spending time with her family, especially her nieces, both of whom are excited that their aunt is a published author. She still loves to travel and explore, which we'll hear about today, uh, as well as spending time exploring the UK. As well as nursing, Wendy also worked for many years in academia. This led to publications in academic textbooks and journals, which is, was the start of her writing career. She has now returned to Dundee, where she turned to writing novels with four series. The D.I. Shona Mackenzie series, which is a police procedural, where the story is told from both the point of view of the police and the killer. Ooh. There are currently six books in this series, with the first being Killer's Countdown. Killer's Curse the seventh book in the series, has been released. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It's been released now. Cass Claymore Investigates, a hu which is a humorous, cosy crime series. A red-headed motorbike riding ex-ballerina inherits a private detective agency and accidentally hires an ex-convict uh, who's a dwarf and an octogenarian. The first book is called Antiques and Alibis, and we'll ask her where she's at with the second book shortly. The Ferguson Flora Mysteries are a young adult mystery series, uh, and the first book is The Dagger's Curse. Bertie the Buffalo, a children's picture book based on the true story of a young buffalo that ran away in Fife, Scotland. Wendy's president of the... I don't know how she has, finds time for all this. <laughs> Wendy is the president of the Scottish Association of Writers and runs two writing groups in Scotland, uh, City Writers in Dundee and History Writers, which is online. She's also a renowned international public speaker and available for speaking engagements and to run workshops. So we'll start the interview, I think. Blimey, <laughs> I'm worn out. Now, Wendy, first of all, we've got to talk about Antigua. You've just returned 
from Antigua. Tell me how it was that you got out there and what were you doing when you got there? Wow. Yes, I have just returned from Antigua. I got back a week ago. <laughs> um, so I've just about got over jet lag at the moment, <laughs> thankfully. Um, I was very fortunate. Um, I'm writing another series of books um, uh, based on a gentleman called Thomas Graham. Now, Thomas Graham was a 19th century uh, surgeon. He was born in Echo Fechin in Scotland. They say if you can say Echo Fechin, you're definitely Scottish. Um, that's near the Scottish borders on the West Coast. He was born in 1818. And when he was 16, he went to Surgeons Hall in Edinburgh and studied medicine. By the age of 20, he was a fully qualified doctor and surgeon. Um, was became a GP just over the um, border in England for a few months, and then he joined the Royal Navy as a surgeon. Um, he was he was tracing the steps of his uh, naval um, surgeon uncle, who was also called Thomas mm -hmm. Graham, and his uncle was um, was Admiral Lord Nelson's surgeon. So I don't know this for a fact, but he may have cut off Admiral Lord Nelson's arm, but I don't know that for a fact. But my gentleman was born after. Uh, you know, Nelson was yeah. of his mortal coil. So um, he then joined the Royal Navy and he went all over the world. He went to Ireland, he helped with the Irish famine, he went to the Caribbean, he went to um, Europe, um, he went to China, Hong Kong, he went all over the world. And he died when he was 31 in Wampo in China. So he, he's the only person I know that packed more into his life than I do. Um, he was unbelievable. You know, and um, the reason I'm writing this, there was a gentleman in Australia um, called uh, John, and I've forgotten his son, Beagle. Um, this gentleman um, has spent 40 years researching Thomas Graham, and wow. he was a philatelist, and he bought up everything about Thomas Graham. It's now in, in, um, in museums all over the world. And so and archives, so it's really difficult to get hold of. But I've got photocopies of everything and some of the originals. I've got his letters, his diaries, his um, his shipping maps that he drew. I've got sketches that he drew. I've got paintings that he did. I've got um, uh, poems that he wrote. The man was amazing. He wrote letters mm -hmm. to everybody, including the Duke of Wellington. Mm -hmm. But so I've got all this in my house. I've got all the research about him. What I don't have is all the background research. Um, because obviously that's very focused on him. Um, I ended up with that because I was Scottish. Um, I was the president of the Scottish Association of Writers mm -hmm. and because I was a nurse in the Navy and my chap was a doctor in the Navy. So this is how I ended up with it. But I've, I thought, well, I'll be a bit cheeky and I'll apply for a Society of Authors grant to go to Antigua and do some research into 19th century naval history in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And much to my amazement, I was given the grant and I spent a lovely two weeks in Antigua doing research about 19th century naval history and also um, 19th century Antigua on the Caribbean. So I was very lucky. <laughs> wow. So um, so are you? I take it you're working on that book now, are you? I am, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's called. At the moment, it's called Thomas Graham, book one. And that's not what his final title is going to be, but that's what it is. Um, I do have a publisher interested. Um, one mm. of the criteria to get a grant was that you had to have a publisher interested. Mm. Um, uh, and I approached a publisher who went, yes, tell them we're interested. And I said, if they write to you, will you say that? They said, yes, we will. We'll say we're very mm. interested. So there is a publisher yeah. interested in publishing it. That's ex That's exciting. So uh, let, let's roll back a bit then onto the other things that you've written about. Um, the D.I. Shona McKenzie series, is that still ongoing? Are there going to be more books in that series? There you've are going to be more books in the series. The next one's going to be called Killer's Cure. They all begin with killers and the second word all begins with C. So the next one is Killer's Cure. Um, I'm not saying too much about that at the moment, but um, I'm writing book eight in the series. There are seven. This is book eight. People still like Shona. The, the yeah. seventh book, I thought, oh, well, nobody will be interested by this point. It's selling like, yeah, yeah. Hot cakes. Yeah. It's selling like gangbusters. So I thought, well, obviously they are interested, so I might as well carry on until yeah. people got bored with this. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's a police procedural. 
It is. Um, D.I. Shona McKenzie, in the first book, is um, newly promoted to uh, Detective Inspector. She's yeah. come from Oxford. She's from Dundee originally, but she moved to Oxford when she was two with her father because mm -hmm. he got a job down at the university there. Mm -hmm. And she's recently moved back to Dundee. Uh, she's off men because her husband left her when they arrived back in Dundee and said he was okay. going to be moving in with someone younger. So she wasn't very happy. And she's not old. So, you know, she's not that old. So, you know, she's like, what's going on here? So she finds herself in the middle of a case uh, with a serial killer on her hands. She's no clue what's going on. Um, she's got a team that are all scrapping with each other. They're always fighting. And a boss from hell who keeps telling her to solve the Bali case because he's fed up of all these dead bodies. And, she um she obviously self solves the case eventually. <laughs> it's a police procedural and it finishes. Yeah. Um, I'm not giving anything away there by saying mm -hmm. that. But of course, then every book she's got a serial killer on her hands, and she's got this reputation in Scotland as like being the policewoman that came up from England and suddenly Dundee was a washing bodies, you know, and then it barely had a murder from one year's end to the next. So she tipped up and now we can't move for them. <laughs> so they're all serial killers. Killers in, in every book, is it? And you get to see it from the serial killer's point of view. Now, you get to see what they're doing and why they're doing it, but you don't know who they are. Mm. Um, so that runs alongside the police investigation. You get to yeah. see both sides of it. Yeah. And and how did you do your research? into? Because obviously you've not been in the police force. No. Um, how did you do your research into um, the procedures <laughs> well basically i sent a message to police scotland because we've only got one police force in scotland it's called police scotland um i sent a message to them going can you tell me about police scotland and yeah. how do you find out anybody i can speak to they sent me a message an email back saying oh yeah we're going to send your local sergeant round he'll be there on this day at this time mm -hmm. we stayed about five hours and answered all my questions drank loads of tea in it loads yeah. of messages. yeah so Know, and plus, I have had things to do with the police because I was a nurse in the military yeah. and yeah. often we had to liaise with the police yeah. for things. Yeah. They're not very busy, the police up there in Scotland, then, if they would drink tea and eat biscuits for five hours. <laughs> would you like to go back? To I didn't say that, Police yeah. Scotland. <laughs> I didn't it's say that. But there's a lot of community policing now. They're trying yeah. to. A lot of policing now worldwide, it's the same here, it's the same in America, it's trying to solve things before um, they happen. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of community engagement and community engagement is seen as um, just as important as mm -hmm. solving crime because they're trying yeah. to prevent crimes. Yeah. And yeah. they're great. I kept saying, do you want to go back to work? And he said, I am at work. <laughs> this is work for me. <laughs> and now... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just at Crime Fest conference for the past four days, and um, there was there was a panel on police procedures and uh, police procedurals. And actually, uh, the, the uh, we were talk they were discussing about how much procedure you actually put in a crime book because they were basically saying that if you included every detail of what an inspector has to go through, the book would be totally boring mm -hmm. because. You know, it is nearly all paperwork and cross dotting I's and crossing T's. So they said, obviously, you have to be given a little bit of leeway as a fiction writer. And I, on my ARC team, I have an ex um, DCI, and she says exactly the same. She reads reads my books, checks them that I've got nothing glaringly wrong, but says, you know, it is fiction and you know, it will be boring if I correct every single thing. So yeah. so uh, I think that's quite important to know, isn't it, for the reader, yeah. that you're not going to yeah. be bogging them down with detail. That's what the police said to me. They said, for heaven's sake, don't write about what we do. Now, for example, the police in Scotland are not armed. None of them are armed. There no. are armed response teams. Now, what would happen is if they needed anybody with guns, the armed response team would go in. Well, hmm. obviously, if we're trying to catch a serial killer at the end, I can't just suddenly send in a whole new team to catch the killer. It has to be my team. So they turn into the armed response team. However, readers, they'll give me reviews or they'll send me emails and they'll say things like, do you not realise that there's no, you know, you haven't done any research, there's no... Um, the police are not armed in Scotland. And I realised I should put it in my book, really, at the front, going, I know the police are not armed. My team turned into the armed response team. Because, you know... Yeah, I think that's what they suggested uh, is best to do, put it somewhere, yeah. 
that yeah, you yeah. as a disclaimer that actually you have done your research but actually but you can't be you know totally accurate otherwise it would be it wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be your protagonist would it my big issue here is that the the law is completely different in scotland we have our own yeah. law system and our law system i think is older than the english law system i might be making that up i think so um but like for example there's no gbh in scotland it's mm. assault to what is it assault to actual harm and things like that so i need to make sure i get the right terms in order yeah. to put it in because otherwise people will quite rightly pick me up uh there's mm. no such thing as kidnap of a child in um scotland it's actually called plagium p-l-a-g-i-u-m plagium right, right. kidnap of a child so i've got not that i've kidnapped any children in my books but i need to know the law quite well mm. so that mm. i get the correct terms that was something else they mentioned actually that um kid uh, abduction is supposedly for children and mm. kidnapping is for adults. Mm. And what they're saying was, you know, you can't say uh, some readers get really cross if they say that an adult has been abducted. Mm. And yet, you know, basically, an ad because an adult apparently in law can't be abducted, they can only be kidnapped anyway. So you can, you can get bogged down with it, can't you? I don't have anybody being kidnapped, abducted or, plagi or plagium, so I'm okay. <laughs> okay, you're fine. <laughs> We're glad to hear it. Well, my latest cosy is based in Scotland, so I'm hoping I've got the Scottish law right, although it is a plain and simple murder, so hopefully I've got it right. You still... You, I, would, I would look and see what it's actually called. You can look up the relevant offences list. It's online. Uh, I the just Scottish called it... relevant offences list. Murder, but I... <laughs> I say murder. To be honest, I say murder and nobody's pulled me up for it. I think murder's okay. murder. Murder's murder wherever you are. So you, have to say, you have to say it with the rolled R in Scotland. Murder. 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 Oh, murder. anyway. Yeah, well, the DI is from England, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she has got a Scottish team. Anyway, um, that aside, but it's more of a cosy, so it's more about oh, the amateur. I have to say, amateur Listen, you'll get people after you if you say it's a cosy and you've got a professional detective. If it's no, 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 the no, 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 the detective is the outsider, the the cosy, it's Lady Marjorie. Ah, it's, right, that's different. Yeah, that's it's, different. Not, it's amateur sleuths, don't it's worry. It's quite confusing. If you, minute you get it, the minute you've got yeah. somebody that knows what they're doing, it's like, wait, this is. No, 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 no. It, it's not a professional. We're all right. It's an amateur sleuth. We anyway, we're not, we're, not, we're, not talk, we're not talking about your books, mm -hmm. although I will just say that mine's out at the end of this month. Absolutely. And it's called Murder in the Highlands. Yeah, but we we and, had this conversation before, didn't we, if I remember rightly, on a panel? about cosy mysteries in we uh, did. at your festival <laughs> yes because um rachel of course rachel prince is yeah, a police yeah. woman but because she cruises uh, she has no authority on a cruise ship yeah. so that's how i get away with it there yeah yeah anyway my books aside let's go back to yours <laughs> so um so <laughs> So we've done D.I. Shona, well, we've not done it, but, you know, we've sort of discussed D.I. Shona McKenzie. We've discussed this um, this uh, historical Thomas medic. Graham. Yeah, Tom, Thomas Graham. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if anybody wants to look him up or wants to it'll be, read it'll him be hard pushed to look him up. There's nothing okay. online about him apart from his date of birth and who his brothers and sisters are. All well, the other research is scattered in archives and museums all across the world. It's, and that, and and our Wendy will be applying for another grant to go and. No, no, no! Uh, I've, got it. I've got copies of it all. Ah, but you, yeah, but I'm sure yes. you can, I'm sure you can find somewhere in the world where you need you actually need something. We'll talk about another grant in a minute. I've got another oh. grant. We'll talk about that in a minute. Oh well, no, let's move on to that now. We'll 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 talk about this grant and then we'll move on to Cass Claymore. So um, go right. on. Tell us about your new grant. I've been given another grant, and it's nothing to do with Thomas Graham, although it is to do with Thomas Graham. I apply, I'm going to America for two months, from the 1st of August to the um, 2nd of October. And I'm doing a, I'm speaking at four different conferences, and I'm um, doing a book tour. I've got book signings all over the East Coast, um, around about Washington, um, Washington, D.C., um, Maryland, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, 
um, New York, New York State. I'm going all over to do uh, book signings. And um, I applied for a grant. Of course I am, as you do, as you do. So I um, applied for a grant from a fund called, I'm sorry, guys, but you have to be Scottish for this one, the Scottish Authors International Travel Fund. Now, the Scottish Authors International Travel Fund, um, basically, uh, it, if you, there's strict tri- criteria. And the criteria are you need to be invited to speak at a conference. So they have to invite you in the first instance. Okay. You have to be paid to speak. Most people fall at that hurdle because <laughs> the amount of conferences that pay you to speak now is not high. Hmm. The third criteria is they have to put you up in a hotel while you're there. Not for the whole two months, obviously, while I'm at the conference that I've applied for. Um, they have to pick you up at the airport, which they're doing. And they have to, and, and the fourth one is it has to um, move your author career forward. Uh-huh. So obviously the first four criteria I met, no trouble. Uh-huh. And the, obviously the, the, my author career, what I said was, well, there's a um, the conference the conference I've been invited to speak at that I got the grant for is the Hampton Roads Writers Conference. Mm. And I'm, I'm a keynote and I'm running four workshops. Mm. And one of the workshops I'm running is called Making Historical Research Fun. And it's going to be based on a lot of my research for Thomas Graham mm. and what I've done. And it's making me, the, well, at the moment, I really am, apart from this gentleman in Australia who's not a writer, I really am the foremost um or expert on Thomas Graham mm. and I'm um so they've given me it because of that because it's me taking Thomas Graham to the states yeah. and getting the information out there so I'm really really fortunate that I've been given the entire price of my flight to the states out of the author international travel fund there you wow. go. that's amazing author international travel fund well, that's brilliant. So, so you're going for two months from the 1st of August? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, Cass, Cass Claymore. Tell us about Cass Claymore and please tell me we've got a book two on the way. <laughs> well, yeah, book two is, book two is on the way. Um, I'm hoping book two will be here soon. Um, book two basically is called, the first one was called Antiques and Alibis. The second one's called Blood and Bones, which is kind of leading A, B. Where is that yeah. leading me? 26 yeah. books later. I think I've bitten off more than I can chew here. I might get bored by the time I get to H, but we'll see. I'll do my best to get to 26. But um, I basically, she's a nut. She's crazy. She's no clue what she's doing. She's really a ballet dancer, but she needs to earn a crust, and she's inherited this private investigation agency. She can't be a ballet dancer anymore because she's injured, and then she gets dumped with this ex condo wharf, and then her granddad says he's joining her. So she's had to sign contracts for these people even though she doesn't want to and it's all a bit crazy it's littered with goons called you know not job norm and they're all mad they're all mad so the second one is called um blood and bones and it opens i think the opening sentence is something like um what is it something about alien you don't hear much about aliens certainly not in dundee and certainly no you don't hear much about people being captured by aliens certainly not in dundee and certainly not in a flat halfway up the perth road on a saturday after a saturday night you know and basically she's got there's women going missing and they've been abducted by aliens and right. it's just a, another crazy caper nobody knows what they're doing in these books and it's just an excuse for me to chuck a load of capers in and Make it, mix it together and make it all work. Bring out a, a crazy cake. <laughs> I can vouch for that. I did read the first Cass Claymore novel and um, look, been looking forward to it for some second book for some years now. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it's likes exactly. to keep us waiting. Um, so, Cass, uh, no, Cass, Wendy, Cass. <laughs> Call me anything, I don't care. You, person, Wendy. Uh, <laughs> I just want to ask you one thing because the majority of listeners to this show at the moment are audiobook fans. Now, uh, are, do you have any plans to turn your books into audiobooks? Plans are afoot is all I can say at the moment. 
there may there may be more to that story, but that's all I'm allowed to say at the moment. Plans where's, the, where's the grant? <laughs> I need a grant, yeah. Who, who does the audiobook grants? If you're listening to this and you do audiobook grants, throw it at me. I'm your woman. Yeah. If there's anybody from Audible listening who wants to send a narrator Wendy's way, um, please uh, please do so. But send them my way first because uh, I got here first. Although my books are all in audio books. So, um, yeah, they are already, so yeah. you don't need one. But I Very do. Okay. Out of it is all I can say. Watch yeah, this. but I, I need a grant to travel the world, which you've got. <laughs> well, in order to get a grant to travel the world, okay, here's the secret. First of all, you need to you need to set a book somewhere else, but you need to set a book somewhere else where you have to do the research. And this is really because so it has to be historical because they won't let you do contemporary research because they'll just go, you're only fancying a holiday. Job <laughs> on. You know what I mean? But here's the secret. Buried in the midst of all the the bump about it all. I read it all because it was in the middle of a COVID lockdown. So I had plenty of time to read things. Mm. And it said it must move the canon of Scottish literature forward, British literature forward. Mm. That's the key. It has to add something. So unfortunately, writing cosy mysteries or any types of mysteries or don't tend to get you the grants. The ones that get the grants are the ones where they're doing historical research and need to go to archives and things. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, a few few um, medical people that I could research into, but I'm a bit busy at the minute writing mm -hmm. cozy crime. Um, okay, so I think we've more or less dis discussed your crime fiction. Yeah. Let's move on to your children's fiction. Are you con are you continuing with children's writing? I am. Yes. Um, the Ferris and Flora Mysteries are going to a new publisher. Um, and the, th the third one uh, in the series, the first two are called uh, The Dagger's Curse and um, The Dagger's Curse and The Haunted Broch. But they're mm. getting new titles. They're going to be called The Mystery of the Cursed Dagger, The Mystery of the Haunted Broch. And okay. then the third one, which I'm writing, is going to be called uh, The Mystery of the Terracotta Warrior. Um, so they're going to the fabulous Malcolm Down and Sarah Grace Publishing under the Sarah Grace imprint. Okay. Um, that's the same publisher as Bertie the Buffalo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are more plans for Bertie the Buffalo. Bertie the Buffalo now has two books out. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, the first one is just called Bertie the Buffalo. The second one is called Bertie at the Worldwide Games, a.k.a. the Olympics. But you can't say the Olympics unless you um, unless you pay them, unless you basically sponsor them and apparently slipping them 20 quid in a brown envelope doesn't count has to be millions of pounds of sponsorship so um but it worked out for me because it meant that i could have bertie and his friends representing scotland and he got to wear a kilt so that was quite mm -hmm. nice a bit of mm -hmm. buffalo in a kilt uh, it's got, also got a soft toy and a coloring book and there is a third one planned mm -hmm. which is and and that's going to be um, based um, aboard the Discovery ship in Dundee, which was the ship that uh, Sir Robert Falk and Scott went to the Antarctic on. Oh, wow. Um, well, I, 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 my next Lady Marjorie is going to be, um, I, I, I think I've decided on murder at the championships because, again, I'm not sure if Wimbledon is trademarked as a as an event, so I thought rather than get into trouble by calling it murder at Wimbledon, I would call it murder in the chat. Murder, murder. Really careful. The Olympics are a definite no no. Yeah, so I'll I'll go, I'll go murder at the championships, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, if if need be, I can move it to another tennis a club tennis if necessary. But yeah. I'd rather ha I'd rather have it mm -hmm. at. Um, at Wimbledon, if I can, but but yeah, I don't want to get into trouble. I might have to write to the W the LTA and find out. You've got to be careful of trademarks. It depends on whether it's trademarked or not. If it's trademarked, which the Olympics are. Well, I'm not sure it would be because um, because Wimbledon is a place. Yeah, uh, and Wimbledon tennis tournament is in Wimbledon because yeah. I find because. It. Wimbledon, you could probably call it murder at Wimbledon because Wimbledon is a place. Yeah. So you're absolutely fine to do that. If you said murder at the Wimbledon tennis championships or murder at the Wimbledon centre court or something, you might end up in bother. Yeah, although it will 
probably anyway we'll so <laughs> i'll cross that bridge when I, ask them i'll ask them i'll cross that bridge when i come to it and ask them i'll say would you, like, would, would you like a murder at your championships i'm sure they'll say of course we would <laughs> Well, to be honest, what I do is I just, apart from the Olympics, I'm careful about trademarks, but I just murder people and dump them there and if, then worry about the aesthetics later. I've got a dead body on the, uh, I've got an entire book based around the, it's called Killer's Crew, and it's based around the um, the ship, the Discovery ship, and it's okay. a play on a film crew and, a, and the ship's crew, the original ship's crew. And it's basically, I just did it. And then I strolled up to them, bold as brass with the books in hand and went, because it's obviously a tourist attraction. And mm. I said, hey, I've written a book set on your uh, set on your ship. Would you like to sell them? And they went, oh, yes, we would. And they put them up on the shelves in the gift shop and they sold them and I made money. And then COVID happened, but they want more. So I'm not, I wonder if they'd um, sell mine at Wimbledon. <laughs> Why are you having your strawberries? Would you like a Would you like a book about murder? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> why not? I just do things, and then nobody's I'm, complained ever. The I'm, only thing I was really careful about was Glam's Castle. Um, I didn't say it was Glam's Castle or where it was when I dumped a body in their gardens. Um, I just said it was a castle. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, uh, yeah, you've got to be careful in some places because Graham's Castle is actually not a, although it's a tourist attraction, it's somebody's personal home. Mm. It doesn't belong to the National Trust or anything. It belongs to somebody personal. Yeah, so I just said it was a castle and I dumped it just over the wall, so it wasn't bothering anybody much. Actually, you do have to be very careful with National Trust homes as well. You can't really mm. mention them because um, they don't like it. Um, so that aside, then, so we've dis we've discussed your fiction and and your a little bit of your nonfiction, but there's another side to Wendy H. Jones, and that is the marketing side. You've written quite a few books on uh, marketing for independent authors. Tell us a bit about that and how what made you want to get involved in that. How's it going? Well, I actually, um, I, I've got quite a lot of knowledge on marketing. Mm. Not, of, not, before I started writing, it was based on something else. Mm. So I have had marketing training mm. and I have done a lot of marketing and then I started writing. So I just made them use the same principles and applied them to marketing books. And it went extremely well. I mean, most of my marketing seems to be chutzpah. You know, I just stroll up to people and go, hey, can I do a book signing? And they just kind of go, okay, then, who are you? And who would refuse you? So they, they do, I mean, most people are quite keen, you know. So I do book signings in a lot of different places, and I mean a yeah. lot of different places. Right. But um, I was asked to speak at the Association of Christian Writers uh, Conference on marketing, and they said, oh, bring your marketing book for you. And I went, what marketing book? Maybe a better write one. So I wrote one very quickly called Power Pack Book Marketing and brought it out. It was written and published in eight weeks <laughs> because that's how long I had before the conference. Luckily, they arrived just in time. And that was the first book um, that I wrote, Power Pack Book Marketing. Mm -hmm. And it went like people were really keen on it. They said they found it really helpful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with marketing, things move on. Nothing stays the same in marketing. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, flavor of the month one time yeah. another yeah. time yeah. so i i decided to bring it out again but in the meantime i brought out a book called motivation matters because mm. i'm an nlp practitioner master practitioner and trainer that's neuro neuro linguistic programming so i thought oh, i could write a book on you know motivation so i planned it out on the cruise and started mm. writing it i didn't mm. quite write the whole mm. thing um but uh, I I did that, and I, so I brought that out, and it had a fabulous cover. My um, cover designer is amazing. It had a fabulous, fabulous cover, and um, she brought it. She So then I said, well, when I bring the new marketing book out, I would like it to go into the Writing Matters series. Mm -hmm. So the first one was called Motivation Matters, and then this one was called Marketing Matters. And she did a similar cover. So the covers are stunning. My cover designer is Kathy Helms of Avalon Graphics, and she's amazing. She did a really good job, and people really like it. But I speak about marketing all over the world. Um, so some of the things, I'm, when I'm in America, I'm talking about marketing to people as well. And I'm a writing and marketing coach. 
Mm. And then I brought out another book called Creativity Matters that's part of the Writing Matters series mm. as well. And that, again, has a fabulous cover that ties mm. in with the series. And that was my first foray into publishing other people. I published mm. 13 other authors. So there's 14 of us in that book. And people are writing about all the different genres of writing and why you should write in those genres. And it's about passion, the passion for mm. different genres, yeah. passion for writing. And um, so I did that. But apparently I'm a really good speaker. I, I really make people laugh. And I use NLP when I speak. And it means that I can um, – that, that you resonate with people. If you resonate mm. with people, then they're yeah. taking – and the books sell really well, so I'm really pleased to be honest. Well, yeah, excellent. So that that's your market. So there's there are many strands to Wendy H. Jones, and we've only just touched the surface, really. Um, so tell tell us a bit what what versions of your books available, and where can people buy them? Well, you can buy all my books. You can buy uh, the D.I. Shona McKenzie Mysteries books one to seven. You can buy them um, on Amazon. You can buy them from any bookshop. You can buy them from Nook, Kobo, wherever books are sold, basically. Yeah. Um, same with Cass Claymore, available wherever books are sold, an ebook and um, paperback. Uh, the Writing Matters uh, series, again, same Amazon, wherever. Um, and Bertie the Buffalo, he's not an ebook because obviously it's a children's picture book, yeah. but you can buy him from any bookshop um, and anywhere books are sold, really, Amazon, any, yeah. any online stores, wherever you can buy them. And if people want a signed copy? Signed copies, you can do that through my website. If you go to my website, go to contact, you can send me a message. Uh, or, or no, you don't have to go to contact. Sorry, I'm talking a lot of rubbish there you go to the shop page <laughs> there's a page that says buy now or shop i can't remember which and you just click on it and then you can order and you pay via paypal and a signed copy will be winging its way to you before you know where you are and your website is wendyhjones.com wendyhjones.com that should be Wendy H. Jones on all social media, apart from TikTok, where I'm Wendy H. Jones author. Okay, so wendyhjones.com or Wendy H. Jones uh, author. Let's just scroll that along the bottom for a minute so that people can see it. Well, Wendy, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, as always, to talk to you. Is there anything else that you want to mention, you know, more grants or... I wish uh, if we find any more grants, I'll let you know. And um and audiobooks, you heard it here first, you may it. follow in the in the near future. So that was episode two of the All Things Books show. Um, thank you for joining me and Wendy H. Jones. What an interesting person Wendy is, and what a full life she lives. Um don't we all want to travel like she does and do a lot of research like she does? I certainly do. Anyway, until the next time, see you, see you soon. <laughs>